Welcome back to that Shiro Life Podcast. I'm your host, Burnett Sherman. We're in season two, which is about the call to adventure on our Shiro's journey. In today's episode, I'd originally planned to talk about how to figure out your own call to action, but I need to share something. This past weekend, I participated in the Mind Body Spirit Fair as a practitioner. In one session, a woman commented how she knew she was supposed to be doing certain things. She even wanted to, but starting was hard. Getting over mindset traps, I'll call them, and our past traumas can be hard. So although I had fully intended to talk today about how to figure out your call to action, this is just another sign I've received in the past week that I need to address that we come into our present lives carrying our past lives. And I don't mean outside of this lifetime. I just mean the past of this current life alone. And that's enough for many of us to deal with. I've also just wrapped up an intense but amazing book called The Body Keeps the Score. And I'm reading that or just finished reading it while I'm finishing the rewrite of my forthcoming self-help book. And as I was writing the first part, talking about ACEs, which are adverse childhood experiences, I questioned whether I should include it or just include the parts about the things that block us from reaching and achieving our goals and how to overcome them. And I realized that it's going to be very difficult to have the mental ability and clarity to claim our epic lives if we're still trapped in the pain and the hurt of the past. My question now is whether I should have what's now the first part of the book be separate. We'll see. We'll see. Finishing my rewrite is on the to-do list for August, so I still have some time to figure it out. But the idea that it's not just our mindset or some unwillingness to change our mindsets that holds us back, at least some of us back, has really, it's been in my heart. Maybe because as I'm reading the words that I've been writing and rewriting for the better part of my 40s, I see how much healing I've had to do myself in order to be where I am now. And it's only in my looking back that I realized that if I hadn't healed these different aspects of my hurt inner child, I wouldn't have manifested what I have over the years, even up until now. If you're saying, yes, I understand. How do I get past the back talk, the sadness, the hurt, not wanting to slow down my body because then I might actually feel it, not wanting to slow down my mind because I might actually start thinking about things I don't want to think about, And you're probably being held hostage, not just by, you know, the mindset guards, something I may be talking about in my book, (laughs) but by the ghost of your own past life. This is the thing. Those ghosts, they can be quieted. They can be soothed. Will they completely go away? Maybe not. Can they be put in their proper place where they don't hold the same power over you physically, emotionally, and mentally? Yes. Will it take time? Perhaps. And perhaps that time can be folded and collapsed. I realize that while I do a message at the end of these podcasts, I haven't really told you about me. And maybe I should. Not everything, because God knows you don't need to know everything. And you're not here for that, but some. So you know I'm an intuitive, but I am more than that. Amongst other things, I'm an intuitive healer and intuitive mindset coach. And I've helped clients fold the space between their present and future through healing and mindset shifts. This collapsed time means they can heal faster and start manifesting what they want to manifest faster. It's a little magic mixed with a basic understanding of how our minds work. 
magic is just that which we in science have yet to be able to measure or explain, right? We just don't have an explanation for it. And I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm not a psychologist, but I don't mind reading and studying. And I pass as a health policy researcher and the community health program manager. They do help with that. There are three main parts of our brain that impact our ability to change, face life's challenges, and create meaningful lives and experiences. And while science won't say they help us manifest, when they aren't functioning smoothly, they will definitely block your positive manifestation of the desired experiences and blessings. One form of healing that I do targets three areas of the brain to help unblock us. It's just one, one form of healing so that we can be more open to change and facing challenges and creating those meaningful lives. It doesn't remove the need to change or take away challenges. And it doesn't mean everything will happen all at once, but it means when it's time to face change, face challenges and be creative, things that come up with normal living, we can use our full mental capacity, our, our full mental forces, rather than having to defend ourselves, so to speak, from an already weakened position. So Ashiro, which you are, Ashiro knows that you can't go into battle without preparing as best as you can. Perfection? No. But healing does bring progress. And I can speak to that from personal experience. When you can start energetically healing these three key areas that control executive functioning, our fear center and emotional control center, and our emotional memory center, we begin to loosen the hold of the ghost. They just don't have as much power when we start taking back that control. And it can shift painful memories and experiences from feeling like someone is pouring salt into an open wound while scraping their fingernails on a chalkboard to someone tapping on your shoulder after you banged it into the corner of a wall. One stops you in your tracks and the other you might rub for a second and then shake it off. And though this week's episode is pretty short because I really want you to digest this idea of healing before manifesting and creating. I so want you to be able to create the epic lives you want, but I also want healing for you so that you can create it. I want your sympathetic nervous system to not be on alert and for you to be able to breathe and relax and appreciate the parasympathetic state that your body can be in and can nurture you from because it's out of places of peace, harmony, and balance that we can raise our vibration and align with the wellness, the joy, the love, and the abundance that we seek. Yeah, so I know this was short, but I hope it was helpful. I'm going to keep listening to Source about whether to get back on to the question of how to figure out your call to adventure or whether I should continue on this course of, of talking about that healing journey before you actually start manifesting. And I'd love to also hear from you. Was this helpful? Do you want to know more? Please let me know. I, I would really love to hear from you so I know I'm not talking into a void. So now let's move on to the affirmation for this week. And of course, I do try to connect the affirmations and the messages with what I receive and source helps me with that. <laughs> Thank goodness. But before I share the mini message, I'm going to um, share the affirmation that you, as you know, I usually say it three times and you can do this in the morning and in the evening throughout the next week. And see what shifts. See what you notice. Try saying it three times in the morning and three times at night throughout this next week. Here we go. 
I am aligned in body, mind, and spirit to be a magnet for peace, harmony, and healing. I am aligned in body, mind, and spirit to be a magnet for peace, harmony, and healing. I am aligned in body, mind, and spirit to be a magnet for peace, harmony, and healing. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so it is. Hmm. That feels good. That feels good. Okay. Now for the mini message for this week. You are held and loved and beloved. Your soul is calling you to greater purpose and your highest self seeks to reconnect with you fully. It seeks to align with your energy by helping you to raise your vibration and be in sync with your highest sense of self. It's okay to release the past, the pain, the trauma and disappointments as they no longer serve your present needs for growth and expansion. It's okay to release and return to your truest self. Shiro, if you aren't getting my newsletter and updates, please be sure to subscribe and follow this podcast if you enjoy what I'm sharing, maybe there's another one woman who will too, and she might appreciate it if you took a moment and shared it with her. In fact, share with just one person you believe is ready to step into her Shiro life. The more women committed to their epic life, to their healing, the better this world will be. Thank you for joining me for this episode of That Shiro Life Podcast. I'm your host, Burnett Sherman, and you can get more info and find podcast episodes at thatshirolife.com. Have a great week, and I'll be back next week, Thursday, for episode 15, either with more on this subject or to discuss the question, how to figure out your call to action. Until next week, know that you are worthy of a great life and you can have it.